crewdownermoneyshouseofmath.com. Here is a set of problems, six of them, that we started out with some 11-year-olds. Yes, there were 11, and they started doing problems like this. This was the warm-up problem. Super easy. They didn't even get the blocks out to do this. They just looked at it and were able to factor it. This one, one of the students was able to do it quickly and easily in his head, and the other one took a minute to figure it out. I mean, like, not even a minute. That's an exaggeration. And if you want to see how to do these negative numbers, like this, here, oops, here, the heck was that? And this, um, and this one is positive, but one like this, then uh, you need to get a password and you can see how to do it. I'm going to skip over the negative ones and you'll see a screencast that covers uh, these in detail, how to do them. So anyway, here is x squared 10x and 24. There it is built nicely. You can see him doing his problems over here. Um, if you zoom in on that a little bit, you know, take a look at the kind of work he's doing. He's 11. Really, these problems aren't hard. Why they give uh, you know, juniors and seniors in high school and freshmen in college problems is beyond me. Uh, well, actually, it's not beyond me. It's because they never see the picture. They never get to fool around these blocks. They never get to see how it actually works and how it goes together. But you see here, with the children this age, we're learning a factor. With the younger children, we'd be figuring out the add-ins for 10, that we have 6 and 4, and that 6 here and 4 there, and then being able to skip count and multiply and so forth. Now we take it the next step. And think about this for a second. Here I give you more information than you had before. Before, all you had was the rectangle, and you had to tell me the two sides. Now I'm going to give you the rectangle, and I'm going to give you one side. And then, of course, the other way to do it, or the other problem, is you get the two sides of the rectangle, and you have to tell me the whole rectangle. And I should make a little, I'll make a little uh, chart that shows division is actually where you get the most information right because now I have all of this I have the whole rectangle I have one side I know what one side is and now all I gotta do is tell you what the other side is simple right okay so there's the other side pretty simple right you can see it the kids are geniuses alright so let's work it a little bit uh, going backwards we take off that okay so I multiply by X and what do I get I multiply this and I get this, right? x times x is x squared. Multiply times 6, I get 6x, right? Oh, look, there's the line. There's the line. What's left down here when I subtract? Well, nothing. No x squareds. Over here, I have 4x. See them? You can count them right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 24, right? Now, makes it super fast and easy. And so there it is written down. That's what's left. Now, are we done? No, we're not done. We have to subtract those away again. And so I figure out, what's it going to be? Huh? Well, it has to be 4. Like If I didn't know this, if I couldn't see this part right here, what would I have to do to get this? Well, I'd have to multiply f at least by 4, right? Even if there was going to be a remainder here, I still have to multiply 4x to get rid of that. And then we're going to subtract again. Right? And, and later on, we're going to a large conversation about combining, that right, really you're combining these things to get zero. Um, because when you have negative numbers down here, and you will later on, because we took those same problems that I showed you a second ago and did the division with negatives, and uh, we cleared up the confusion as to how you get the opposites down here. But anyway, they figured out very quickly that this needs to be the same as that for it to work out. Okay, let's pause. Again, here you will see this one done, but not this one, because, like I said, if you want to see the negatives, you need a password. So here, very simply, and you can see it's in the child's writing, uh, we factored it. There we go. We got out 2x squared, 8x, and 6. And this 6 told us all about how we were going to factor it. And when they're negative, they all this last thing also tells us all about how we're going to factor it. And we talked about how this is prime, so it can only be one way. So, after a very short time, they were able to factor these easily and quickly and tell me what the sides were. And notice we're only talking about the edges. If you're confused about this, why, is it, why it isn't 2x plus you know, 6 over here instead of just x plus 3, then go back and look over the algebra site 
or the algebra tab and page over there and uh, on Crouton Ramon's House of Math and also uh, some of the other uh, blog posts and so on. But basically what we're doing here is just counting the edges. Right? If this was 18 and it was 3 by 6, we'd only count the outside edge. 6 and 3. So here I have 2x squared, 8x, and 6, and it's very obvious that the answer is 2x plus 2 and x plus 3. Simple. This one's kind of a joke because they were asking me, uh, or actually I was asking them after we did a whole bunch of other problems. This is the fully abridged and edited version that only has the positives in there. Would you like an easy one or a hard one? And they said, we'd like an easy one. So I gave them this one because you can't factor it. So that's easy. You just look at it and go, hmm, can't be factored. <laughs> but they fooled around with it and fooled around with it and finally figured out that, look, the only rectangle we're going to be dealing with is the factors for this 27, and there's no way we could put it together and get negative 3x. And then they found, oh, yes, we could get positive 3x, though, and make it work out. Like I said, you want to see how it works with the blocks? You need a password. And then here again, um, I was asking them how confident they felt. We've just been doing a lot of division with uh, these kind of problems where I gave one factor and they had to do the problems. And uh, so they asked for an easy one. So I gave them this one. Again, can't be factored. <laughs> but of course, they bang their head against the wall <laughs> trying to figure out how to factor it. Um, which actually was a good lesson in and of itself. This one, I told them afterwards, they're like, well, are you sure this one can be factored? I'm like, yes, it can be factored for sure. And after fooling around with it a little bit, they said, well, you could factor it if it was uh, negative 10. And they were able to play with the blocks and see that negative 10 would work, but negative 8 does not work. There's no way to do it. Um, anyway, and again, if you want to see how to work these kind of problems using base 10 blocks or base 10 manipulatives, very simply get yourself a password over at croutonramonshouseofmath.com.